once the taro is cooked, there's a couple of things that are really important. If you want to make sure that it's cooked, you're going to go ahead and simply take a butter knife and insert it. And you get to know the feeling over practice. But depending on the maturity of the taro, the starchiness of the taro, and how well you cooked it, those are the three different criterias that will have all a different feeling. What we're going to do, the first step is called pohole. We're simply going to use our hands. And I'm putting it in the water because this taro is hot. But after this initial step where I put it in the water, I, I won't be putting the taro in the water anymore. I'm giving it kind of a good scrubbing, getting as much of the skin off as possible. It's in this process, you folks, that the beneficial microbes from the skins are transferred to the starch during the cleaning process. So it's really important that you cook your taro with the skin on to preserve the beneficial microbes that will be later expressed when we eat the poi. The next stage is called ihi. Uh, I do a two-stage ihi. I'm going to do a gentle scrape on the entire outer surface. This first scraping uh, is going to be used to feed the animals. Nothing is wasted in this process. We raise pigs and uh, they love Thursdays because every Thursday for just about the last 15 years now, we've been doing a community tarot pounding. I am just taking off all of the unedibles. Okay, guys, now we've gotten it to this point. Many times people ask, what is different between the hand-pounded poi and pa'iai that you make and what comes from the store? This step in the cleaning is the major difference. What makes our poi consistent week in and week out is that we essentially make our poi and consume it only from the starch of the taro. So this next step, I'm going to scrape the taro all the way down to the starch, removing all of the sweet parts. But because of the way that we've cleaned it, these parts will be used as table taro and as an ingredient in dinner and other meals. We call this leftovers koena. Some of my favorite koena dishes include, and starting off with, Koina meatloaf, koina waffles are amazing. Uncle Skylar, what kind of koina dishes do you like? I like to mix my koina up with hamburger beef so you can make the patties, koina, and your grass-fed burgers. See, guys, notice I said koina meatloaf, and he basically said koina meatloaf in the same thing. This stuff and hamburger is absolutely amazing. You can make pancake. You can simply fry it up. You can eat it as is. It's amazing. All right, so... After we scrape the coin up, what is left is a starch. If this is the core of your recipe, this ingredient, this is what traditional poi is made from, is solely the starch. You can actually see there's going to be three different varieties of taro that are going to be placed on this board. But because all three were made from the starch, I can already tell this is going to be amazing, delicious meal ice. This particular taro here, before I go ahead and scrape the coin off, I want to show this to you because a lot of people are like me and are very visual. When the taro is maturing, you can actually see the difference in the color between the starch and the ulika. And the stages of maturity go from i'o to ulika to loli loli. Starchy to gummy to overripe, watery. This taro, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to remove all of that sweet stuff. And it's going to come off really nice and soft. And although people go, what are you doing, Daniel? You're wasting all the sweet stuff. The sweet stuff is literally what makes the poi sour faster. And if you want to have poi that has an amazing shelf life, you want to take it down to the starch. When you become accustomed to the flavor of the taro after it's been properly fermented in your umeke, you find out that the fermented starch is what you dream about. We saw the size of this taro shrink tremendously after I really started to, to apply pressure in the cleaning. The best part of the taro is what is left. And when we talk about only putting the best on the board, this is what we mean. This is how you put the best on the board, the eel, the starch. You see how it pounds? The starch pounds differently than the gumminess or the overripe parts. You see how it folds and holds? 
that happens in such a way that this tarot, after it's done being pounded, will need to be needed in order for the water to be absorbed and the poi to be mixed. This type of starch will result in at least doubling, if not tripling, in volume when the water is added. That's it, guys. We just uh, repeat this process again and again and uh, make food to feed our families. Hopefully, we're sharing this knowledge with a greater community that wants to adopt these practices and bring it into their life.